Stellar Blade just went gold a few days ago, and we're entering into the final two-week push towards release. That means the developers have gotten to the point where they feel confident about their game and are ready to ship it. There will definitely be numerous patches to upkeep the game and add quality of life improvements, but the vanilla game of Stellar Blade, as we will soon know it, is done. The factories are no doubt printing it and shipping it worldwide. Kim Hyung Tae let everyone know on X a few days ago that the game went gold by posting this picture of his development team at Shift Up. What was also released about a couple of weeks ago was a quick one minute tour of the Shift Up studio space. This video was released on some of the official Sony YouTube channels from different countries. The video was quick and the beginning of it seemed to be from the point of view of a drone as the camera seemed to fly through the studio at Shift Up in South Korea. After the quick flyby, we got some slow pan shots of the Shift Up studio space that showed the hundreds of developers working on Stellar Blade. It was great to see this passionate team at work in what seemed like a pretty chill but productive studio environment. In this current landscape of video game development of pervasive crunch during the final lead up time of various video game releases, as well as studios laying off employees immediately after launch that seems to not be uncommon nowadays, it was nice to see the devs at Shift Up relaxed yet passionate about their game in this one minute clip. In addition to spying some easter eggs on the developers screens, it was nice to see the Shift Up devs hard at work on their game in a studio that looked quite pleasant. There were reports that Kim Hyung Tae got all of his employees a PS5, so the leader of the studio seems like a nice guy that is extremely passionate about making video games, but also cares about and for his employees. This video made it apparent that the devs are being taken care of. We hope there are not immediate layoffs for the Shift Up team in the next month, and that they can continue to work on Stellar Blade post-launch, so that they'll continue to have a job, and of course, so we can also continue to get Get some great post-launch content. All right, so I mentioned seeing some Easter eggs when I looked at the video. Let's get back to talking about them. There were a handful of pretty good ones that we saw in this video tour of Shift Up Studio, and that's what I want to talk to you about here in this one. Let's jump into the video proper and take a look at what I saw. Just as the Shift Up font comes on screen, there's something we haven't seen before in any of the trailers or the demo. If we take a look in the bottom left, we can see one developer looking at this circular wheel type object on two of their screens. It does kind of look like we're looking at the developer's desktop on the left monitor because we see some window icons. Perhaps this is just an image being used as a desktop wallpaper. However, if you look at the right screen, we see the image again. So it's pretty conclusive that this image is important. Most people know that this game is taking influence from Christian religion. There is the obvious inclusion of the main character Eve, and two of Eve's companions being Adam and Lily, or Lilith. And we also see Christian influence in some of the enemies. I made another video about how enemies seem to be taking design influence from fallen angels and the children of fallen angels known as Nephilim. And then there are the inclusion of angels almost everywhere you look in Stellar Blade, with the six-winged angels we see on the front of the Airborne Squadron's vessel on their descent to Earth. These seem to be taking influence from the Seraphim. They're basically like the first tier of angels that are closest to God. And then we see the various angel statues in Edo 7 and the many-eyed angel depicted on the space station from the clip we saw in one of the earlier trailers of Stellar Blade. But in terms of this wheel-like object, yeah, we haven't seen this before. It could definitely be argued that this object also takes reference from Christian religion, as it seems to be inspired from Ophanim. Ophanim were referenced in the Bible in Ezekiel 1, when Ezekiel recounts his vision of God, in which God is being carried on a chariot by four angels called cherubim and four angels called Ophanim. Ophanim is a Hebrew term that means wheels. Ezekiel describes each of the wheels of the Ophanim as being inside one another and intersecting the other with each rim being inlaid with eyes. The wheels seen on the screens of the developer definitely seem that they could be drawing reference from this biblical imagery. 
Another possibility is that this could be Mother Sphere. We first learned about Mother Sphere in the earlier trailer for Stellar Blade, as well as some sprinkled in text throughout the demo. Upon pausing and reading some of the item descriptions in the demo, there's a lot of information that can be discerned. The protection type exospine states that Mother Sphere was watching a presentation by the CEO of Eidos Company in real time through the network. The speed increase gear states that Mother Sphere abandoned the survivors on Earth. A possibility is that Mother Sphere is an artificial intelligence, or perhaps she is the first real AI. Perhaps Eve and all other Airborne Squad members are spawned from, or are quote-unquote children of Mother Sphere, in which their consciousness, or their AI self, derives from Mother Sphere as if an offspring of her, while their bodies or body frames, are organically produced with exospine components infused into them. I really think Eve and all of the squad members are some form of artificial intelligence. Yes, they have flesh, bone, and blood, but these bodies could be produced or grown instead of born, and the airborne squad members could be given their superhuman abilities and strength through the exospine implants and gear modules. There's a fairly large amount of item descriptions for the gear, weapons, outfits, and other items that we saw in the demo. Way too much to go into here in this video, but I will make another video discussing the almost insurmountable evidence that point to Eve, Taki, Lily, and the other squad members being AI with human bodies. Okay, I gotta stop myself before I go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Like I said, I'll save that for another video. Let's get back to Mother Sphere. When the Natiba took over Earth, the humans that left and formed the colony most likely took Mother Sphere with them. But we know Mother Sphere and the network still functioned on Earth once they left. We learn from the memory stick titled Lament of Despair from one of the fallen soldiers that it wasn't until later that the network was destroyed. Perhaps Mother Sphere supported humankind and artificial intelligences across the network, but once the network was destroyed, the people that remained on Earth were left in the dark and Mother Sphere remained in space with the human colony. And this, Mother Sphere, is what we're seeing. These are just two of my guesses at what this object could be. But for now, it's time to stop the speculation train from running off the rails. Let's reel it back in. <laughs> so the last thing I'll talk about in this screenshot is that we get to see a familiar image of Eve here in the menu with the gear slash equipment screen getting some earrings equipped. As we move on, we continue and see some maquettes that look like enemy Nativa. Of course, within the studio, you'll also see some figurines of characters from Nikkei, Shift Up's previous game. So these could also be enemy types from that game, but I'm pretty sure they are Nativa. It's just difficult to see exactly which enemies they are. So I'm going to let it fly by the remaining computer screens because I cannot see much. We see a few more computer screens, this guy looking like he's doing something important, someone doing some playtesting, and then boom. We gotta stop it here because I really want to pick this apart. So the developer here is making an outfit. We see the developer tweaking the back of the outfit in what looks to be the 3D sculpturing software ZBrush on the left. ZBrush is a three-dimensional digital sculpting software that digital artists use in video game and movie production to make digital assets, characters, and any other type of models slash sculptures. What is really cool to notice is if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you can see the name of the file as ch underscore costume underscore 54. And then the screen on the right has the same outfit, but it looks to be a higher resolution render with some painted and lighting effects emanating from the back. I don't recognize this software program, so I can't really say for sure what software we are looking at this outfit through. I know that the game engine for Stellar Blade is Unreal Engine 4. It doesn't look like it is being rendered in Unreal, so perhaps it is another art-based software program used to add color and lighting effects after the model is sculpted in ZBrush, the 3D software system we see on the left screen. Okay, so back to the name of this file. It says Costume 54. So I don't know if this means the 54th outfit slash costume for Eve, or if it's the 54th costume of all the costumes designed for the game, including companions and NPCs. 
This outfit does seem to have some of the trademark Eve type of design components, such as the over-the-shoulder arm strap. Eve has a similar clear cape-like shoulder garment on her green 7th planet diving suit. The outfit we see here also has chains that connect from this strap-like piece to the back of her waistline. We see chains that were similar to this on Eve's Racer's High outfit that we could equip in the demo. And then we even see something at the middle back area between the shoulder blades of this outfit on the right screen. There is something written in white letters in the same place where the letters EVE -E were written in Eve's green 7th planet diving suit. If this red outfit does belong to Eve, then this could be something similar to that component of the green diving suit, something like her exospine. We know that the outfits are comprised of nanobots. We learn that the outfits envelop Eve as her quote-unquote clothing. Whether this is done in a similar way to how the Mark 50 Iron Man suit in Avengers Endgame covered Tony Stark, or if the nanotechnology is actually part of Eve, it's still unknown. There are so many possibilities to what Eve actually is, but thanks to some of the gear description lore that was in the demo, there seems to be more and more mounting evidence that Eve's body is not natural, and in fact, synthetic in some to what we saw in Eve's green 7th planet diving suit. Okay, so if this is one of Eve's outfits, the fact that the file name is Costume 54 is really exciting to me. Kim Hyung Tae confirmed we're getting around 30 outfits when the game launches. So this means that the Shift Up developers probably designed at least a dozen more outfits that didn't make the final cut. We know we're going to be getting some post-launch outfits that I believe are going to be free, so perhaps they will iterate on these outfits that didn't make the final cut, and we'll be in store for seeing some great outfits that will be added to the game in the months to come after launch. Alright y'all, I'm gonna let it run again, cause I don't really know what this could be. It looks like it may be some type of traditional dish or sculpture, and then I don't know what zone AYL04 is. But maybe we're just being shown this to see what a crazy setup this guy has going here. He's got three screens. It looks like he's got his terminal open on the right screen, and working with a library of files on the left screen. And then the dude has two keyboards. So pretty intense setup and this just adds to my appreciation for game developers. I think most of us don't realize even a fraction of what they really do. So here's to us giving the Shift Up team major props yet again. And then a couple more close-ups of some of the developers working. When we look at the screen in front of us, we see a developer game testing Eve in her seventh diving suit. But if you look a couple of stations over, we can see a character with white hair on the monitor. It looks like a really rough model. We'll see this developer screen with the same character being worked on again later on in the video, but I just wanted to point this out. We'll circle back to this in a bit. In front of this developer seems to be the cockpit of Adam's ship. Not much to see here, but it's nice to see this guy feeling proud about something. Their pride and joy is definitely shining through in this video. Here we see what I think is one of Eve's companions. Although there is the enemy health bar above him, we've seen Eve talking to this character in the State of Play trailer. In the trailer, he tells Eve it won't be easy. This makes me think that Eve is not a villain, but in fact that this guy is talking about a mission they're about to do together, and he's just warning Eve about the mission's challenges. What also adds to the argument of him being a companion to Eve is that we see him as one of the characters on the Collector's Edition vinyl that is being included in the physical pre-order copies of Stellar Blade being sold in South Korea. He seems to have a more of a heroic pose as he holds a golden sword. He's also got this really cool looking red samurai mask and then some white dreadlocks. Again, he is seen talking in a calm manner to Eve in the State of Play trailer, so I really think he's going to be a companion type character. So when we look back at the enemy health bar that appears above his head, the enemy health bar has nothing to do with him at all. If you recall in the demo, when Eve fights the brute enemy boss, Taki is also on screen fighting as your companion. You can get quite close to Taki in a similar way to how we are close to this character here. So it may be that this is a companion that we are fighting fighting alongside, and the enemy health bar belongs to an enemy that is off screen and we simply cannot see it. 
Eve is simply turning to look at her companion at this moment, and the enemy is actually what we see on the second monitor. When we zoom in on the second monitor, we can see some limbs and hands that have a more monster look, similar to what we see in the designs of enemy Natiba. Maybe this is a new type of Natiba we have not yet seen that the enemy health bar belongs to. Then we transition into seeing the photogrammetry camera rig station getting ready to capture some image data of a costume. Upon looking at this costume, it immediately looks like the black and red gothic style skirt outfit that we saw Eve wear in the State of Play trailer back in January. The skirt has the same emblem in the front, and the top of the outfit has a similar collar. However, that's the end of the similarities. This could be a new outfit altogether. It's pretty hard to tell. But what this does tell us is that in addition to scanning in real people, such as Shin Jae Yoon, the body model for Eve, the developers are scanning in real-world objects to use in their process of creating assets and outfits. Some of the outfits, such as this one, and also the pants that we can see Shin Shin Jae wearing in this photo are being used in the game, as we can see them as the pants that Lily wears. Perhaps all of the outfits and assets that have some real world basis, such as the outfits that are made of real clothing and not the nanotech diving suits, were scanned in this way using photogrammetry. I really hope we get some more behind the scenes documentary style videos released on YouTube post launch that go into Shift Up's creative process. I think this studio has gotten a lot of merit during the development cycle leading up to the release, so I think the Stellar Blade community would really appreciate seeing such videos. Here's hoping we'll have some. And then perhaps this is the result of the scanned in green outfit we saw earlier. Of course this is now white, and we see the addition of some leg stockings and knee high boots. This outfit really does look like the black and red gothic style skirt outfit from the State of Play trailer. So I'm kinda thinking the outfit that was being scanned really was the same one, as well as the one we see here. We already know we're getting different color schemes for the outfits, so this just seems to add to that confirmation. I remember hearing Kim Hyung Tae stating that we can customize outfits, and color would be one of the aspects of customization. So here is where I want to circle back to that white-haired female character. We get a better look at her here and see a pretty rough sculpture model of her. We can tell this is an early first iteration of the character model because it seems to be a model with low pixel count that is not rendered with high fidelity. It's hard to tell if this white-haired character is going to be the same one we've seen from the State of Play trailer, the demo sizzle reel, and the collector's edition vinyl, but it seems like it is. The fact that we're seeing her here, as well as the fact that we saw the red samurai masked character, tells me that these two characters are going to play an important role. I'm thinking their roles will be companion characters for Eve. The demo showed us how Taki could fight alongside us. I really think we're going to be able to fight with comrades we meet and befriend throughout the narrative of Stellar Blade. This would be great for us to experience not only for gameplay purposes, but also for story and exposition. When thinking about the demo, just by having Adam follow along with us in the drone, we were able to learn so much information about Earth, as this is a foreign place for Eve. Think about how Adam tells Eve Eve about the rain when she steps out into Edo 7, or when she is in the subway terminal and Adam tells her what a subway system is. Having a companion really helps give Eve, and in turn us, information about this world. We also saw that having companions can lead to some pretty funny moments. When thinking back about the moments between Lily and Adam, where they would banter back and forth during the exclusive gameplay video released last week. How far are you from the Alpha Core? Hey, hey! Don't push me while I'm operating. I know you're taking a break. Are you sure this is the right way? Maybe I should be in charge of navigation. How about you do your job, and I'll do mine? All right, stop it, both of you. Let's go. Having companions that talk with Eve, banter back and forth with each other, and support Eve in combat would really help Eve create meaningful relationships with the people she interacts with, on Earth. Based on the story descriptions from Sony's Stellar Blade website, it seems that during the narrative, Eve is going to come to an inflection point and she'll have to make a determining decision that steers her away from her original mission. She'll start learning more truths about the history of Earth, the colony, her existence, and what happened with the Nativa. I think she'll be influenced by the relationships she makes 
with her squad mates, and the people she meets on her journey. So to see that we're potentially getting this white-haired woman and the red samurai masked man as companions informs us we'll get both fun and diverse gameplay opportunities that give us a change of pace to our single-player moments with the inclusion of companions, and the opportunity to build relationships with some fun-looking characters. And then that's pretty much in terms of the studio tour. We get to see a screenshot of the very first trailer for Project Eve on this guy's desktop. It looks like it's simply his computer wallpaper. Then we see the developers look at the motion capture in use as this performance actor goes through some of the attack moves of Eve, and the final shot we see is her performing one of her retribution attacks on the Nativa. I'm thrilled we got this video. We got to see the Shift Up developers doing their thing. I know this video will really help us appreciate their hard work even more when the game drops in a couple of weeks. Their slight smiles and evident dedication to this game is definitely going to translate to us. I know we're going to feel their passion when we finally get our hands on Stellar Blade. And of course, it's always great to see some unseen footage and screenshots that I can speculate on. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming, guys. I truly appreciate your time. I know you could be anywhere doing anything right now, so it really means a lot to have you here. If you do have a thought you'd like to share, let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'll be jumping down there myself to keep up the discussion with you all. See you next time. Peace.